Hello Encode, this is Regina and this is my long-winded uh, response to your rant today. Um, in my previous tech, uh, text I meant to say non solus and as it turns out we aren't immune to being solus either especially when we forfeit our spirit over to our animal nature. And unfortunately, since they do look like us on code, but they ain't us, as niggas do come from the four corners of the earth, you got your European nobility niggas, your African niggas, consider their tribal warfare 54 countries deep. South American niggas, they also don't get along, just consider Haiti versus the Dominican Republic. Asian niggas, TikTok videos showing some of them are reviving the Afro, eh, of all things. Australian niggas, and we can't even discuss, no proof, just assuming. The likely protected, hidden, and the most powerful frozen frequency niggas of Antarctica. The world's governments have agreed via treaties to not even discuss, let alone allow anyone to have unauthorized access to. And then there's us. We, the North American niggas, are the most disrespected over the globe, the most mocked yet mimicked, and by all these other niggas, forget Whitey, who ironically do not identify as black, but their nationality, but by their nationality, and their ethnicity, okay, no problem, which they'll then throw at us as if to say, Y'all better recognize with much respect, but no reciprocation. Hmm. Then those same niggas arrive here with their histories. They, with the help of the pale skinned fake Jews, will mount upon us. Most of their history is not ours, but being the open people we tend to be, we'll welcome them immediately with their skin tones alone. With few, if any questions, just assume our people then we'll mix and marry them, and as a result, there's few pure-blooded of us left in existence. At the same time, they change their identities, such as their names, put on wigs, lighten their skin, adopt a more white tone in speech and pronunciation, and become an acceptable, acceptable rather, Negro. They misguidedly believe the Pales will accept them, uh, then denounce the actual American Negro, calling us complainers, race baiters, and lazy. <laughs> Here, hold my trauma, aka history, while I demonstrate to you, African American Negro, the proper way to be American. Further, on code, this intermarriage and intermixing has tainted the culture as a whole, our bloodline purity, decalcified our third eye, therefore created chaos and confusion around identities, ethnicities, histories, culture, etc. All of this impacting our perspective and ultimately has caused detrimental long-term amnesia, where our only recall seems to be slaves to the pale skins that we feel victimized by as a culture for over 400 years versus victorious. Not all black cultures were enslaved, but because we identify with people's skin, we identify with people by their skin as our kin, we take on their energy that only depletes us, but it doesn't belong to us. So we don't progress because we're stuck like Chuck inside someone else's narrative. Slavery in this context is a choice. Kun Yi West, he was right about that. We are suffering from generational curses and or epigenetics that belong to other people who are not necessarily our people, but we insist. Then we also deal with racial and class differentials, which is the source of the brown paper bag niggas, passing for white niggas, such as the mulattoes, the octoroons, the quadroons, uh, the creoles, the melungeons, and many of them passing for white and institute the same white degeneracy, white mentality, hiding inside of a white chocolate Oreo cookie. Many of these people fall into the middle and affluent classes who, as your friend so proudly boasts, I hate niggas. We would probably be able to rise above all the oppression and afflictions, but, in my humble opinion, because we um, saw them and assumed them to be us and just like us on the same team, and because we insist on identifying as dead people 
aka black, which in Black's Law Dictionary means dead, deaf, as in necro, which is very relatable to negro. Both white and black are cultural and race constructs, but only one gets nothing while the other literally is protected by law, regardless of the offense receiving all benefits. And Mr. Onco, what white guy are we talking about? Anglo-Saxons, fake, pale-skinned, light-skinned Jews, or any non-American, regardless of skin color, who does have the option, the legal option, of identifying as the status of white in our government. Hence your friend's perspective, all if not most niggas who come from everywhere else, here is the first things they tend to do, almost like a playbook, and they haven't even met you yet or met me. Number one, they identify as white both literally and figuratively. Number two, they'll denounce any association to North American blacks. Ironic since the American blacks insist on, we're from Africa. Number three, solely blame North American blacks for their perceived oppression. For our perceived oppression, I should say. Number four, right on the backs of all the hard work blacks have accomplished over periods of time so that immigrants can enjoy the American way of life but instead of being humble and showing gratitude far too many of them instead kiss white ass and tell North American blacks to kiss theirs so your friend may be onto something about North American blacks being replaced it certainly feels that way especially considering all the free perks illegal migrants are receiving these days um, from our tax dollars And we're witnessing a reset where only the willingly strong shall survive. Some of us is tired, tired. Man, the shit is over. Bobby Hemet. Uh, Mr. Oncode 247. I was thinking this evening that about two years back, I caught this video of Dr. Delbert Blair and Bobby Hemet. They were on somebody's radio podcast. And Dr. Delbert Blair was explaining that black people in America have no clue who they really are. And he, his, the way he was pronouncing these Indian names, uh, Indian monikers, it was real, the audio wasn't great, so it was sounding muffled. And I was having a hard time making out what he was saying. As a result, I made out what I could, and then I took that information to Google search. And... I was still because I wasn't quite sure what he was actually saying. Um, I was just kind of following breadcrumbs. And as I was doing this, I it hit me when I was looked, ultimately what he was actually saying was that black Americans come from the Al- Algonquin tribes and the Iroquois nation. That's what he was saying. So when I was uh, researching those two names and I'm looking at all the information attached to um, those two nations it struck me like oh my goodness oh my god we are the Indian tribes the the, uh, autochthonous indigenous to this landmass called America and it was black faces first or copper colored um, faces first in this area and probably all over the globe Um, And to me, that probably has a lot to do with how close the sun was to to the earth millions of years ago. So it would make sense that this would be a dark planet first before, you know, um, cyclical changes and natural disasters occurred that started to break up the continent. But I'm definitely one of those. I definitely hold hold to that theory that this was Pangaea. one landmass at one particular time and at that time everybody was dark faced um uh but it was it was just it was a very interesting revelation to realize all over the united states every 50 states here every city every uh, county has indian names everywhere all on the streets all in the um some of the sports um uh it's just fascinating how all of this information literally is hidden in plain sight to explain who you are. Um, but through all these distractions with all these 
various names to include Indian. That's a, that's a distraction. Um, calling some someone uh, Cherokee when it's actually a whole another name that starts with the letter A. I think the name is a, a, a Wanaja or a, a Winya or some, something like that. I was looking it up yesterday, and I, I, I escapes the name escapes me at this moment. But there's all once you discover here comes some sucker to change it up and distract you again. <laughs> so everything is a darn distraction, but all is permitted, and everything is hidden right in front of us, right in plain sight. So, anyways, I that hit me, and I I thought about that because um, I still want, I'm trying to find the video where um, I seem like the other day we were talking about. I, I'll have to review our text because you did ask me to send you some video that I had re- referenced, and I I need to figure out or remember. Uh, which video that was so anyways have a blessed evening and chat with you soon